Let's begin our project. We'll go start to finish and we'll look at working with a GINT project inside of a inroads or civil environment. So we'll begin with the project and we'll bring in a background map of the area. So basically we'll open up a DGN file and we're going to add that background map. We'll come in and we'll begin by connecting uh, or setting up what's called an ODBC connection to our GINT database. So we're going to come in to our ODBC data source and we'll just add a access driver. And what we're going to do is we're going to give this a name and we're going to call this um, GINT PRJ zero one and then what I what we're going to do is go out here and select our GINT zero zero one PRJ in fact and what we want to do is say all files and go and grab our GINT underscore microstation file just rename that and we'll say OK. So what we've done here is we've established a connection to that database. So now let's go in and take a look at that database. And what we'll do is we'll open the file And with our database open, we're going to focus on the point layer table. The point table has a point ID for our boreholes, and it has a northing, easting, and also it has uh, an elevation field. Next, we'll look at the table with the information that's relevant to our project. Uh, in this case, our project will be creating subsurface layers from the various um, lithology groups. And so we'll click on lithology soil. And we'll see again, we have a point number, but this time we have many point numbers. And that's because at each varying depth, we're, we have several depths for each point, depending on the conditions of the lithology. So we will uh, need to create a join. So we'll come in to create, and we can close these tables. And we're going to create a query based off our point and our mythology table. And we'll simply join them by the point ID and we'll make sure that the join is um, including all the fields where the point number is the same. So we don't want a one to one. Uh, we're looking to join up all our point bores in lithology to our point numbers. And next thing we want to do is we just want to grab out of these tables the information we want to query. So we'll say point ID, um, we'll hold down control, say date started, I want the elevation, and of course I want the north and east, and then I'll drag those down and place them. Now from my lithology table, um, let's expand this over a bit. And basically what we want is everything from the depth field that gives us the depth of the lithology type and we'll include all our relevant data and we'll just drag that in and I want to leave a space here 
and the reason I'm leaving a space in this case is to add a second field and this field will be the elevation to field and what we're going to do with the elevation to is we're going to take the elevation and we're going to subtract the depth field so we do a simple equation uh, similar to what you would do in Excel so basically elevation minus depth and we'll toggle that guy on okay so now we can check our query and run it and we see the elevation to field and here we have our elevation 124 and here we have our depth 6 so we're at 118 and that's correct okay so next we're going to look at how we're going to classify this information and because you can see we have several boreholes in this case B25 B21 and so forth and when we look at the grouping we want unique values and unfortunately within B25 alone we have um, six groupings or six depths uh, however we only have two groupings so that's not going to be adequate what we're going to want to do is group these in this case not only by the group name uh, but perhaps the uh, USCS and maybe even color or whatever other relevant information we want and we could do that a couple different ways but probably the easiest way would just be to add a new field or a new column called class and so that's what we'll do and we'll create a field called class to classify and we'll just come in and and we'll add um, USCS and we'll add a primary color primary color one and we'll run our query take a look at that end field and so you see now we have various classifications and that's what we need so how do we get this into our design we do it through what is known as a VRT file so first thing we'll do is we'll save and we'll just call that query one and say OK and then we will open up VRT file. So a VRT file is simply a notepad file and we're going to be importing the table data into a design file with the attributes assigned to it. So we'll give that layer a name and we'll call it we'll call it boreholes. and then we'll look at our ODBC source and what we need to do is grab that from our data source so we're looking at gint underscore PRJ001 so that is our ODBC data source and then we are looking at geometry we won't assign any geometry our X field 
is east, our y field's north, and our z is elevation 2. And our query is going to be called query 1. Oops. And we'll do a file save as. And we'll call it get microstation BRT. And we'll save that in our project folder. Now we're ready to import our data. So we will activate map at this time. And with map activated, we can go back to our workflow. And what we'll do is we will use the GIS import. And we'll add our file that we just created, the VRT file. So we'll go to our desktop, say all files. And we'll come in and grab our VRT. You see the layers have been created called boreholes. We'll use a cell. And we'll go out and we'll grab a cell library. And we'll use the cell called bore one. We'll scale it maybe two times. And we'll choose an elevation field. And we'll say import. And we'll see our bores as they come in. We can come in here and highlight our layer information. So any of this information we can expand on, we can symbolize, and so forth. Um, for our purpose, uh, we well, we could annotate this. For our purpose, what we're going to do is create subsurface based on the lithology. So we'll use data acquisition. and a combination of our data browser. Come down here. We'll open up our data browser and we'll add all our selected data. And if you recall, we created a field called class. And expand that over. And we'll sort it. And we can now come down and use our list, and I believe we can, and we can highlight all of the first type of data. down shift select none and we'll say highlight or add to selection set and now with that acquisition open we'll classify that as SFCG. So we'll go create surface, empty surface. And we'll give it a name.
and we'll come down. We'll say import, and we'll toggle on our brake lines. And we'll get our surface. And once all our surfaces have been built, we can use the um, MicroStation Clip Volumes and the View Attributes. And we can display our surfaces together. Or we can analyze them 